I want to follow up now. So last week I shared kind of like a, um, you know, it was a insider tip, um, with some cool news. Um, well not news, but just like information about, you know, what could be, what could be going on in Hedera in 2024. Um, and there were a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of comments about that, a lot of follow up. Um, and you know, people were, were leaving all sorts of comments. There's a lot of conversations, uh, you know, conversations about it, both on, you know, on YouTube, um, also on, um, X as well. Um, I mean, you can just see the comments here. I had full on conversations with people in the replies here. Um, and a lot of ideas being thrown around of what, what it could be. I think what, what grabbed people's attention the most was, you know, from my source. And again, it was anonymous source. It was a very, uh, you know, very connected individual, um, you know, in the ecosystem. And, uh, I, you know, I'm not going to speak too much about kind of what the original thing was. You can go and watch that clip. Um, but basically, you know, after that, it was kind of really looking at what other people were hearing, other breadcrumbs they were seeing, um, and what kind of confluence that could provide in regards to like timelines and different things like that. I think most specifically people were, were focusing on the, you know, the, the April roadmap and also the fact that they're, you know, these, the, the kind of like institutional access point that's purportedly coming in April and then the kind of monster use case in quarter three. So that was, that was really into also too, there was some great conversation on Reddit as well. Um, the Hedera subreddit, I know I goof on the Hedera subreddit a lot, but still, you know, a lot of good conversation happens there. Um, had some people sharing some good information in the, in the comments, um, on Reddit, which was good to see. Um, but really what it came down to was like, this is why I called this space is kind of like part two is because for me, there was kind of one, there, there was one kind of laneway here that, that kind of aligned with what what the source shared with me, not so much in a way of like what they were talking about, but more so like, um, the, the, the theme of what we could start to see coming, um, into this ecosystem. And, and specifically I saw a post on, again, the Hedera subreddit because I was tagged in it. Um, and the person who made it, um, they did this, deep dive the same day that I published the rec kind of like the show and, and kind of what that, you know, anonymous source was telling me. And they put out this deep dive on the DTCC um, and security. And I was tagged in that post and people were saying like, Oh, did you do this post because of, of Brandon's video? And they were like, no, not really. And so I thought that was very curious that there was this really comprehensive breakdown of all these different breadcrumbs that relate to institutional access points, these different types of things. Um, and it was done by a person that like literally hadn't watched the, the, that episode at all. And so it felt really organic to me and I was, I was looking at it and I think off the top, you know, for me, it's like, you know, specifically do, you know, talk, talking about timelines. I don't think that something like this, would be what you know something we could expect in April. I think that that's that's nuts, but it isn't far off from you know what I'm thinking in 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 my thinker brain here. And I wanted to just unpack it a little bit and just kind of read what they shared and share some of my thoughts on it because I do think it's very interesting. I do think that there's like a few more questions that get raised by it. But essentially, you know. What is the DTCC? Because this is an important thing. We've talked about this again, like I said on the show previously. I think it was like episode 100 and something or whatever. But the U.S. Depository Trust and Clearing Corporation, DTCC, is like the behind the scenes manager for most of the buying and selling of stocks, bonds, and other financial securities in the U.S., right? So think of it as like a massive hub that ensures all of the money and securities change hands smoothly and accurately. Um like when someone buys a stock and another sells it, the DTCC makes sure the buyer gets the stock and the seller gets the money. It's kind of like, it's the, it's the trusted middleman for all this kind of stuff. And, you know, let's kind of look at this, um, this post here. 
because they kind of hit on an important point here, which is the DTCC processes over $2.5 quadrillion worth of securities every year, right? Like that's crazy. They've got annual revenues of over $2 billion, and They've got assets of $81 billion. So this is, this is like a huge entity in institutional finance. This is the pipeline for um, a lot of the stuff that we talk about in traditional finance and TradFi. And reading further, in October 2023, <clears throat> DTCC acquired Securency, um, a digital and financial technology company focused on tokenized issuance and trading of securities, right? So, so tokenizing these securities um, as assets. And very similar to what, you know, we've seen Aberdeen do, that's a governing council member. They're tokenizing money market funds and stuff like that. So these types of things are happening all over the place. It's a big theme um, in in the Web3 space right now, the narrative around real world assets and tokenized securities and all this kind of stuff. So this is like right down the line. Um, and through this acquisition, DTCC formalizes its current uh, DLT pilot initiatives and is expected to deliver an institutional post-trade platform that supports most digital asset products, including existing securities wrapped in a digital structure and digitally native on-chain assets. DTCC is a truly unique market participant, both from a clearing licensing perspective and a quote, everyone in the industry uses them perspective. That's the big thing here is like, this is the pipeline literally everybody uses. Asset managers, broker dealers, custodians, banks, service providers, the entire capital markets industry will eventually be users of these DLT products, right? So that's really the key thing here is, and this is before Hedera even comes into the fold, right? Which is we've got the DTCC. They are the gateway for a lot of this activity, right? Uh, the quadrillion, uh, 2.5 quadrillion uh, dollars in volume. And so if you think about an access point in which institutions would start interfacing with tokenized securities and you see the DTC acquiring a company like Securency, you, st you start to connect some dots here, right? So let's continue on. Um, so the acquisition will help enable DTCC to continue driving blah, 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 blah. So what's Securency? What is this company that the DTCC has acquired? Founded in 2015, the company was the longest standing security token infrastructure platform prior to its acquisition by DTCC in 2023. So it's been around for almost a decade, right, doing this stuff. Securency issued tokens are compatible with virtually any blockchain network, right, and provide an advantage over competitors that only offer Ethereum compatibility. So there's another element here, right, is a lot of these different um, service providers um, doing these tokenized securities. A lot of times it's only Ethereum, but Securency is really interoperable. So um, the RegTax compliance engine called uh, CATs, blah, 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 blah. Um, native, co consumer, uh, native customer management applications are embedded into the security platform, which allows issuers to manage their investors without the use of external applications. And it's evident that DTCC will leverage security's uh, pivotal efforts to uh, further develop the base tokenization layer as, as real world assets continue to digitize. Um, it appears, and based on the research of the of the individual that posted this uh, really great breakdown, um, you slash Sri Jank, um, <clears throat> based on their research, it appears that Hedera is inherently baked into a lot of the technological aspects of security. Um, and so they, they kind of dive into a few of these. So the first one um, is virtual power. And Virtual Power Exchange is a joint venture between Boss Controls and Securency. Leverages Hedera for several of its core capabilities and differentiators. And it's, you know, the VPE will leverage the Hedera token service and the consensus service as a trust layer for this kind of carbon credit, renewable energy credit service and marketplace. And we've talked about the, the Virtual Power Exchange on the show before. And that's a joint venture of Securency. So right out the bat you start to see, okay, Securency is already kind of embedded in the Hedera ecosystem with some of these different joint ventures. 
Also, there's open crowd. An open crowd as part of this, um, you know, as part of what's, what Securency is working on, open crowd is actually a little more of a familiar face um, in the ecosystem, right? Open crowd is, you know, specializing in blockchain solutions. They work with Hedera and they developed, you know, the Dragon, Gra the Dragon Glass Explorer, if people are familiar with that. They support drop payments, right? They support Diamond Standard already. Boom. Three major names that we're all familiar with in the Hedera ecosystem, right? Drop, Dragon Glass, Diamond Standard, right? That's Open Crowd. And they've partnered with Securency, enhancing its platform and regulatory compliance for securities trading across DLTs. So again, right? Another point of confluence that um, Hedera could really come into this conversation in a big way. The, the other thing is um, Vertalo and Securency. So Vertalo partnered with Hedera Hashgraph to integrate their platform with Hedera's Ledger, aiming to improve performance, security, and compliance. The company later partnered with Securency to enhance their platform's token services and compliance features, and they are linked with the Hedera ecosystem players like DLA Piper, um, Entoro Capital, Arcax, focusing on digital assets uh, solutions. So again, another connection here. And continuing on, um, this is kind of where it gets interesting. So as we kind of wrap all this up in this post here, <clears throat> you know, when we look at all these different people involved and the ways in which all these partners of Securency are integrated with Hedera and how integrated Securency is with Hedera and how many times we've seen them come up. And now the DTCC literally acquiring that company, right? We've seen this in the past too um, of acquisitions of these kind of Hedera focused companies into larger companies. Um, it kind of, you know, it kind of leads us to a few different things and, and ending off this post, <clears throat> the author says, DT, DTCC integrating with Hedera Hashgraph will be a game changer. As many of you have already stated previously in terms of scale and governance and both key for a body like DTCC, no other network comes close. Um, and that's really kind of where, where it kind of leaves off is, you know, these, these names kind of keep coming up and these connections kind of keep coming up and the conversation in that post is really great. But I think that's why people kind of bring in, you know, my ep the, the show from last week and kind of what was shared with me by the anonymous source and kind of the information that I shared on the show is, you know, very, very in line with that. Now, again, when the source shared that, um, you know, that, uh, an institutional access point or, or, or however it was worded, something to the effect of that for April, something of this scale, like I said, probably not, but it is kind of in that wheelhouse. This does make sense. And, you know, it, always in my mind, I kind of go like, if the DTCC wasn't looking to leverage Hedera Hashgraph as a technology for um, their DLT efforts, in their kind of, you know, quadrillion, multi quadrillion, um, through dollar throughput, you know, uh, platform that they have that everyone uses, would they be doing anything different, right? If they were interested in using if in Hedera, would they be doing anything different? And I don't think so. And I think that that's kind of where I land at with this. And I think, you know, some questions pop to mind, which is like, um, you know, what is Hedera's exact role in this? We don't know. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of other networks that are trying to do these types of things. And obviously, um, Hedera is not going to be the only network that the DTCC looks at. But I think that the the acquisition of Securency um, really does make it appealing. And the addition of um, some of the stuff that was shared with me, it just, you know, it, it leans it a certain way. Um, now, is this going to, like, you know, what, what does, like, you st I don't want to get too hypothetical, but you start to think, you know, what what would happen if Hedera were to, be to util were to be utilized on that scale, right? Like, my mind hasn't really gone there for a long time, as I think because of the bear market of, like, what if Hedera was used as a technology platform to deal with, you know, this, this massive market 
at a huge scale. And it's like from a technology standpoint, I mean, it's clear. I think a lot of people in the community agree, you know, that Hedera is a great technology for this. I think there's some more building blocks that are needed, but, um, you know, but the other side to me goes like, what is going to make Hedera appealing to something like, um, you know, the DTCC. And, and I think that unfortunately, you know, a big component of that is some of those as Brady and, and, and Grung was saying is like, those KPIs that everyone looks to total value locked, total volume, total users, uh, total value represented, all those things. And right now, Hedera doesn't have like the most impressive numbers in those areas. And it's important to grow those things. And I think that these types of things really illustrate how you have to tackle both the kind of degen retail side of things and you also have to tackle kind of the institutional enterprise type things. They need both. You can't, I think the lesson we've learned in this community recently is, um, you know, that neglecting retail or thinking that Hedera is above retail in some way does a lot of damage. Um, and so I think that we are recovering from that a little bit, but I think that moving forward, it's important to, you know, the way I think of it is uh, retail, DGENs, they're going to get us to the top five. And uh, enterprise institutions is what's going to keep there, keep Hedera in the top five. That's my take. Um, and we're, you know, I'm interested to see kind of what unfolds. I mean, this is kind of part two to this discussion. Those are kind of the follow-ups that I've seen in relation to that. And I'm excited to see what, what transpires, what, what things could be happening. Um, and I did a post yesterday. I was kind of like, it's April now. And that was a big you know, aspect of the information that was shared with me. Um, and now we're in April. So I think it's going to be a very interesting time uh, this month as, you know, the source shared with me is, you know, this is going to be a key month. And if it, you know, if it's not, um, then, you know, we're, we're going to have to obviously do an episode about that, <laughs> but we'll have to see. So I'm definitely going to be watching things closely. Um, I want to talk about diamond standard now.